Welcome to the afternoon of the theater. Two character, one act plays are gonna be read virtually, um, written and virtually read by the fourth grade crew of 2020. Setting the stage, time, late afternoon. Place, outside the field that my friend Water is in, at Curtain Rise. I'm standing in a forest. In front of me is the fence for green pasture that water is in. The fence seems to go on forever on both sides. Water is galloping towards me. How did you get here? I followed the truck that took you here. I was so scared when the humans had me in the truck. Please stay here so the farmer can find you and put you in the pasture. No! My greatest wish is for the world to be free and together. Remember when we were in the plane? I can't give that up. Then how are you going to get me out? I'm going to try to break through the fence so you can escape. He tries to break through the fence, but doesn't break through. I think that the entire herd can break through the fence. I'm going to get them. No! Why? Because I'm worried that you won't come back. I'm going to get them. You can't stop me from going to get them. She turns and gallops away. Several, oh, several hours later, Wynne comes galloping, galloping back with the rest of the herd. We've come to get you out. The herd goes to work, breaking through the fence, and breaks through. You were right when you went to get the rest of the herd. I should have known that you would not leave me forever. Happy neighing and whinnying. I would not leave you forever. After all, we are stronger together. The herd gallops away. Curtain drops. Come on, let's go explore the city. But I don't want to, Mom. I want to get one of those yummy donuts. Honey, but you know that we're not allowed in the donut shop. So come on, let's go explore the city. Well, I'm going, I'm not going until I get a yummy donut. What are you doing on my sidewalk? I'm doing nothing to you. I'm just taking a nice walk with my dog. Well, I'm sorry, but this is my sidewalk. Uh, random person number one starts pushing random person number two. Rose runs and knocks over random person number one. Ah, thank you, little cat. Here are some donuts. Rose runs back home. Where were you? And why do you have those donuts in your mouth? Oh, I helped the person who was getting bullied, and she gave me two donuts. Anyways, why didn't you want to go explore the city when I was asking you? Because I want to go alone. Can't you understand I want to go alone, Mom? Okay. Well, thanks for the donut, but we're going to bed now because it's your bedtime. Rose sneaks out. I will go out alone. Rose goes and helps some of the city. Rose, if I want to be kind and if I want to be help. If I want to help and be kind to everyone, I should invite my mom to come help me accomplish my goal. Rose goes back home. Mom, do you want to go? Do you want to help me accomplish my greatest wish? Sure. Anners and Rose, go be kind and helpful. <laughs> Setting the stage. The time is 11.25 a.m. on February 13th, 1985. The place, a farmhouse. At curtain rise, the background looks like wood planks nailed together. On the ground, there's a bunch of hay. Spike is sitting on the chair, stage right. Spike looks towards the audience and speaks. Max thinks about eating everything. First time Max saw me, he drooled. 
Once I had a dream that I woke up inside of Max's stomach with a bunch of other hedgehogs. I am not food. Food? Did somebody say food? Shh, Max is coming. Hi, Spike. Uh, did you did you say? Oh, there's no food. Me hungry. You're always hungry. No, I'm not. Yeah, right. What do you mean? I only eat every serving at every meal fifteen times. Exactly. Oh, why do you look so tired? Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I've stayed up three nights in a row, Max. Why the heck are you not sleeping? Because I'm afraid my dream might come true. What dream? I had a dream where you ate me and a bunch of other head shocks. <laughs> I, I only, but I've only eaten one hedgehog in my life. <laughs> and it was like eating uh, cotton candy full of nails. <laughs> you what? I'm just kidding. I don't eat hedgehogs. I only eat hedgehogs' legs. <laughs> uh, but I don't eat my buddies. Except for that cockroach named Bob. <laughs> That doesn't make me feel any better. I may never sleep again. Wait, I have an idea. I can make a bunk bed without a bottom bunk and a rope ladder so I can pull it up and you can't eat me during the night. Huh? Oh, sorry. I zoned out for a few seconds. Well, I guess I'm going to have to do this myself. Where's the nearest wood store? Hmm. And a vending machine. Fine, I'll see if I can order one. That may keep you full at night so you don't eat me and the other hotels and I can finally get some sleep. The end. Give it to be continued. Setting the stage. The time is noon. The place is the forest. At curtain rise, Lucky is at the edge of the forest looking at children playing. Tim is digging for roots. Lucky, get away from those children! But why? I don't want you to get locked up in a pound. You're the only friend I have. I'm fine, but you know it's my dream to have a home. Fine, you can keep watching them, but stay hidden. Lucky keeps observing the children, but while she watches them, she notices that their parents are looking for a dog. Tim, they don't look dangerous to me. Yeah, but they are. Well, your missing looks dangerous to you, and while I was watching them, I noticed that they're looking for a dog. But if you get a family, I'll lose you, and you're my family. But I'll just be next door. Tim, I have an idea. Why don't you come with me to the house? I don't know. I'm really old, and I don't know how their parents would feel having a mouse around. Well, what if you hid under the house and we could talk every time I get outside? Mm, that could work. Great, let's go. Tim, how about you hide in my fur? Good idea. There were two kids, and one of them piped up. Hey, look, it's a dog. It doesn't have a collar. Can you take it inside? Sure. As Lucky walks inside, she feels overjoyed. The end. We do all the things. I was walking in the woods and found a banana. But then my friend Banana Boat 723 came out of nowhere and said, No, don't eat that banana. Eat flies. They're mushy and gushy and smelly and awesome. So eat them. Fine, but can I have a banana? No. Well then, no. You 
have to eat them. No. See, I'll just swing away. <laughs> the next day. Hey, I don't care. No, I'm sorry about yesterday. Just, I was, I wanted you to be more like me. Time, summer, place, the field, at curtain rise, a field with grass and flowers. Oh, hi, didn't see you there. I'm Jessica, hee-haw, the donkey. And I'm Amelia, hee-haw, also a donkey. These two are best friends. And this is our story. Yep. So gather up your popcorn and blankets, because this will be a night to remember. I'm in my field, and I used to feel like it protected me, but now I feel like I'm trapped, because, well, you see, the farmer that owns me put my best friend into a different field. And now I'm lonely, because she won't come back. I do miss my friend, but I love my new home, and I don't know what to do. All I've been doing is trying to get her back. She heed and pawed at the farmer. Hee-haw! Hee-haw! Farmer, can I get some sleep? Oops. This field is full of grass. I don't think I want to leave this place, but I sure do miss my friend. Amelia! I miss you! What was that? I'm a little freaked out. Oh, wait. It was just Jessica. Jessica! Yes? I'm sleeping. Well, I was anyway. I've been up all night thinking about how much I miss Amelia. Come on, let's take a walk. Wait, is that Amelia? I see her! Jessica! Yeah. We're right next to each other, so we can visit any time. Well, I guess if you be really curious and really kind, then you will discover something new or find what you are looking for. The end. The time is 2012. The place is a forest. At curtain rise, the storm and ember are across from each other arguing about a game. Well, you kick me all the time, you hypocrite. No, you kick me all the time. I don't. <sighs> I totally had that argument. She just does the same thing over and over again. No, I don't. Annoying. Hi there, my name is Storm, and you can tell, see that I was in an argument. That's because I got mad easily, and my friend Ember is annoying. No, nope. you still kick me, and there's my proof. When someone else reacts to my rage, it kind of depresses me later. But actually, that, what just happened, I know how to fix it. I know something. Well, that's a proof. I mean something special. And 
and it's walking away when you get mad. Do you want to play a game? Play! <laughs> Not now! What? Yes, now. All you do is sit there and tell a story about how I supposedly kick you. By the way, you kicked me more. So I have time to call to myself to calm down. No, now you don't play with me. And people can't react. I can just talk about it later when I calm down. Words are very powerful. They can calm me down. And also, they can give you emotional scars. Emotions. I'm feeling bored. Play with me. I'm going to keep asking you, NOT NOW! But now I know, from all of my experience, do not be afraid to talk about your feelings. And, yeah, that's the end. <laughs> Time, sometime in the 21st century on a sunny afternoon, place, Savannah, at Curtain Rise. It's a hot, sunny day, hip, and Hippo is in a watering hole. What a beautiful day. I'm going to go eat some seaweed. Hi, Hippo. Oh, hi, Gabe. I was just looking for you. What do you want? Can we have another race? Sorry, Gabe, but I want to have a relaxation day. Come on. I'll let you have a 10-second head start. No, Gabe, I want to relax. Well, can I relax with you? Sure you can. Yes. Just let me go get ready. Okay, I'll get some seaweed. Hippo, go get some seaweed. Gabe comes, Hippo comes back. Gabe comes back, too. Here, want some seaweed? No, thanks. I'll have some bones. Suit yourself. Hmm, this seaweed tastes way too salty. Oh, that's weird. Usually it tastes fine. Anyway, can you go get some floaties? Sure. Thanks. Gabe goes to Hippo's house. Hmm, I wonder why Gabe's got, been gone for so long. Hippo goes to Gabe's house to find Gabe. Meanwhile, Gabe comes back from Hippo's house after taking almost all of Hippo's medicine. Hey, Hippo, I got the floaties. Hippo? We go to Hippo at Gabe's house. Hey, Gabe, hey, Gabe are you here? Oh, he's not here. I better go get back. Huh? Hippo finds a Hippo finds Gabe's journal wide open and starts reading it. Hippo finds a sentence where it says, Dear Diary, trying to make Hippo be less healthy is going well so far. I put a bunch of salt on the seaweed and I'm going to I'm I'm going to be way more healthier than him and live a lot longer. Yet he still is my best friend, so I'm not gonna kill him. I'm just trying to make him less healthy. Your writer, Gabe. He's trying to make me be less healthy, but he's my best friend. At least he wasn't trying to kill me. I'll get him for this. Hippo goes back to his watering hole and sees Gabe. There you are. Hippo, where were you? I was looking for you. Did you get the floaties? Yes. Do you want to float with the floaties? Sure. Yay. Here, want a bone? Ooh, yes. Thank you. I went looking for you at your house because you were taking so long to come back with the floaty. I saw your journal wide open because I'm a little nosy. Uh, and I looked inside and I saw you were trying to make me make me want to be less. Oh, gosh. Make me be less healthier than you. Oh, you saw that. Gabe looks down because he feels bad. Yeah, I am really sorry about that. So I know you are very competitive, co competitive, so I got you back, got back at you. I put lots of salt on your bone. 
Oh, so that's why it tastes super salty. And instead of trying to sabotage each other, maybe we can help each other be healthier and live longer. That's a great idea. Let's do it. Uh, Again, I am really sorry for trying to make you be less healthy. And I'm sorry for putting lots of salt on your bone, and you owe me big time. Hippo is smiling. And here's some narrator. Gabe and Hippo helped each other live long and helped each other live long. Um, Gabe and Hippo helped each other live long until Gabe was 45 and Hippo was 45, which in Hippo and Dog Years is really old. And they both went forth and conquered. The end. Setting the stage. The time is the hot afternoon of July. The place is outside the family's den. River on one side, Huckleberry Patch on the other, tall mountain range behind. At curtain rise, Sally and her brother are playing outside. Her sister doesn't want to play and is watching. Sally's trying to get her to play. Come and play with Oscar and me, Lulu. It's fun. They love playing. They loved playing in the worn down area outside the den because the tall pine trees created a cool canopy of shade in the scorching hot summer sun. No, thanks. Really, you should, Lulu. Please. Stop, Sally. You know I don't like rough housing, so just quit it. Ah, fine. Ah, fine. I'll go pick some berries. She took her tongue out at Lulu. Bye. Sally lumbers off towards the huckleberry patch and pops a few into her mouth. The huckleberry patch is dense with small, round, delicious berries. Juice dribbled down the fur on her chin. A sweet aroma fills the air. Sally decides to take a dip in the nice, cool current. The forest is set back a few feet from the water and covered in dry, crisp grass mixed with smooth, round stones of all different sizes. At that time, she didn't know how fast the current was at that place. Her footing slipped, and she got carried downriver. Splash! Help! 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 Water fills in around her. For a second, she thinks she's going to drown. Lulu! Tiny paws fly towards her, but she sees that they're Lulu's paws. Lulu jumps in and pushes her with her nose until her body hits the bank, and she has just enough time to grasp Lulu's scruff to get her back on solid ground, too. Are you okay? They lie down exhausted. I was trying to tell you, Sally, it's dangerous, and you need to pay more attention, especially with other animals and hungry male bears around. Look! A large, dark shadow moved towards them. A bear! They ran as fast as their paws could carry them a couple of yards to the den and scooched far into the back corner. We're safe. That's why I've been so scared for you, Sally. Hey, that's Grandpa Bear. I need to be scared about a Grandpa Bear. They both laughed. Well, I guess that was good practice. Yeah, I understand now. I'm so sorry. I just didn't understand why for all this time you don't didn't like my adventures. But I'm glad that that was just Grandpa Bear. I yeah, Grandpa Bear. She started crying. Oh, Lulu, I love you. I love you too so much, Sally. But I'm glad you finally understand. We We both both know know our our family family motto is is, if you're not not taking risks, risks, you're you're not not having having fun. fun. The end.
Constellation, Constellation. Yeah, Mom? I was just eating a rabbit that I hunted last night. Constellation, you went out again? You know that you are not allowed to do that, honey, don't you? Yeah, I do know that. Then why'd you go out like that? Well, I heard something outside and I wanted to go and see what it was. So I went out and I saw that it was a bear. So I followed it almost all the way back to his den. Constellation, you think that going and following a bear almost all the way to its home is more important than staying alive for your family? That thing could have killed you. Well, no. I just wanted to see what it was, and I was very intrigued. Ed, I need to solve your urge for following, following a bear. You need to understand the danger that you are putting yourself in when you choose to do this. Okay, Constellation, you can go and play now, and we will go out tonight together, so that you will understand how unsafe your behavior is. Okay, Mama, I'll go play till bedtime, and then we'll go, right? Right, honey. Later at night time. Come on, Constellation, time to go. Coming, Mom! Okay, we've made it to our hiding spot until the bear comes out to get his dinner. This is so exciting! Well, I'm glad that you're really excited for this. Yeah, I am. Oh, great, here he comes. Now, shh. We need to be very quiet and just listen, watch, and follow the bear. Got that? Yep. Got it. Okay, come on, follow me. Okay. Constellation? Yeah, Mama? I have one question for you about this. Okay, what is it? Why are you so interested in the bear? Um, I don't know. For some reason, they just interest me a lot. Okay, that's fine. There he is! Come on, Mom, let's go and see him! Constellation, no, no, no. I'm not going to go over and see the bear. We're going to stay right here because I really don't want you going anywhere near that bear. Okay, but I am so excited to do this. This is going to be a lot harder than I thought because as a coyote, it is in our nature to be curious, to want to go out alone, and to hunt. So that's okay because we can do hard things. Right, Constellation? Yep, we can do hard things. Okay, come on, let's go. Okay. Constellation, look at that bear! Wow, that is so cool, watching him hunt that fox, right, Mom? Well, Constellation, if you don't stop going out in the night like you have been, that fox could have been you! Really, Mom? Yep, that is true. Wow, I never knew that. Well, now you do. Okay, look, he's headed back to his den now. Come on, Constellation, let's follow him. Okay, let's go. Five minutes later. Constellation, now I need you to follow my lead, okay? Okay, Mama. Good, okay, now let's just watch. Wow, let's go this way, Mama, come on. Constellation, no, stop. We're not going to go that way. Remember, you are going to follow my lead, right? Plus, I really don't want you going too close to that bear. I'm still kind of scared that you might go too close and he will think that you are part of his family's dinner, okay? Okay, I'll stay right next to you and let you lead us. But I just want to see what that bear is like and what he's doing. Shh, I understand you're curious, but we need to think of safety first, okay? Wow, Constellation, look at what the bear is doing. Wow, he's cooking dinner for him, his mate, and the young, just like you and Daddy. Yep, that's right, honey, just like me and Daddy do. Now do you see how dangerous a bear can be? Yeah, I do, and I promise that I will never, ever, ever go out on my own again until I'm older. That's right, honey, and I hope that you'll stick to that. Well, I think it's time to go home now. Did you see what you wanted to see of a bear? About a bear, do you understand though, that bears are kind to their families and provide food and make food for them, just like you and daddy do for you and your siblings. They need to somehow get that food, just like we saw the bear killing that fox. That is, 
That is what me and Daddy do when we go out to find food for the rest of the family. Bears are much, much higher up on the food chain than we are. We need to be very careful when we go out to hunt for our food, okay? Wow, I never thought of that. This was a good lesson. Okay, now let's go home. Yeah, let's go home, Mommy. 15 minutes later. Well, we are home. Yep, we are. Now I think it's that it's time for you to go to bed, right? Uh, okay, Mom. Thank you for teaching me that lesson tonight. I will respect you and Daddy's word, and I will never go out at night again on my own. Night, night. I love you. I love you too, Constellation. End of the play message. Well, I hope that I've solved this issue now. As you see, as you can see, that was hard, but I know that we can do- We can do hard things. <laughs> That's right. Now get to bed, Constellation. Okay, Mama. The end. Time, 1120 in the morning, place, Lower Salmon River, at Curtain Rise. There is a rapid on the river up ahead. People on the shores are scouting and leaving trash behind. A herd of horses is standing near the shore. I wish everyone wasn't polluting the stream today. What is pollution? Pollution is trash that has been left and forgotten. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It is a bad thing. The trash that is left down in the water to rot, when I swim around, I smell it and it makes me sick. Wow, I didn't realize that because where I roam, the air is clean and I don't get sick. Can I do anything to help? Well, you can pick up the trash and put it in the garbage bag and dispose it of prop it properly. properly. I will do that right now. Thank you for your help and taking pride and care in where you live so we will be healthy and happy. The end. Time, June 2017. Place, the Sahara Desert, at Curtain Rise. Claire is snoozing in her nest. I am searching for something. The sun is rising beautifully in the east. Claire, wake up, please. Hmm? Did you eat the rest of the food in your sleep again? I don't think so. Why do you ask? We don't have any food left for the dry season. I knew I heard something last night. Now we need to go out and find more food, but we will have to spend so much time on it because you don't want to move from this place. Stop overreacting, Anaya. But we are desperate for food and need to find food now. What should we do about it then? If some were more abundant, maybe we can even throw some other living things into the mix. I think that we should move out of the desert. Where would we go? It's not like we live next door to a city of happiness. I know that we don't live right next door to our dream home, but we can try to find one. If you don't put work in, you don't get work out. I don't want to take the risk of being without food in the middle of the desert. But we will already be in the middle of the desert without food, so what is there to lose? I don't feel safe out there. If I get hurt, who's going to provide for me? My little wings can only go so far, anyway. I will be there to help you, Claire, no matter where we go. If I didn't go anywhere, then you wouldn't have to provide for me and things would be easy. But I don't want to be safe. What's life without an adventure? I would rather be safe than have an adventurous lifestyle. But, I mean, you're right. 
we can be safe and comfortable right here, even in the desert. Well, I guess I am right about that, but you're right too. We should have more adventures in our lives. Yeah, we should. You, can, you can't learn if you don't take risks. Why are we even arguing about this anyway? I don't know, Anaya. It's a bad argument. I'm going to go gather some more food for the dry season. Wait for me! The end. Time, nighttime, two years ago. Place, the seas of Florida, the Atlantic Ocean. At curtain rise, the stars are shining above the ocean like the tips of little fairies' wands. <sighs> oh no, where are we? Mira, wake up! What, what, I'm awake. Oh no, no, no. We're, We're lost. lost. The rest of the pod must have gone without seeing us. But Big Bear usually makes sure we're all together, but... Oh, no. Mira, 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 what is it? Talk to me. There, there could be... What? There could be sh sh sharks, and we're without the protection of the pod. Oh, no, Mira, don't start this again. Please, not now. The likeliness of a shark attack- Don't even say the words. Okay, but we need to find a way back to the pod so we can save Big Bear. Yes! Yes, yes, yes! What? We have magical powers, remember? Oh, gosh. Iris, I know you're excited about your dream coming true, but I really don't think that magic is going to be the- It is the solution! Magic is the solution! Oh, I'm so excited to use it. Aunt Desi said that the magic has to do with the stars, right? Let's think. Hmm. When everything is lost and quite distraught you feel, look up to the stars and try to find the eel. What? Wait, what's, the, what's that you just said? Uh, uh, oh, that's, it's just the old rhyme about the stars that Big Bear used to tell us when we were little, remember? Mira, that's it! The eel constellation! What about it? It's north, so if we follow it... We'll find the pod, because that's the direction they went. Exactly! Let's swim up. I don't see it. Me neither. Maybe this is where we use our powers? To make it shine bright! Oh, cuz, come on, we've got to! Do you want to go home or not? Okay, fine. But... Um. How will you know what to say? I'll just go with my instincts. Uh, stars, be bright? No. Please, Lord Eel, shine down upon us. It's not enough. Hold my fence together. Please, Lord, Please, Eel, Lord Eel, shine, shine down, down upon, upon us. us. It worked! Iris, you were right. I never should have doubted you. Magic can actually be good. But the most powerful magic of all is love and family and friendship, especially when things aren't going well. Like Big Bear says, we might not have it all together, but together we have it all. <laughs> Thanks, Mira. Big Bear sure is right. Now let's go! We've got a pod to find! The time is the afternoon. The place is the forest. At curtain rise, Claire and Samantha are arguing amongst some trees. Why do you not want me going? Why don't you want me to become a veterinarian? I'm afraid you won't come back. How do you know what makes you think that? You'll love it there. You won't want to come back here. Blood season comes soon, so you think... You think I wouldn't come back when that happens? Well, maybe so you don't get hurt. Flood season 
Er, other animals might get hurt, so yeah, definitely just leave them. Okay, I think that now you said that I realized how horrible it was to say that you shouldn't be a veterinarian, but you'll forget about me and everyone else. No, I won't. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have yelled. It was so horrible to hold you back. I'm sorry, Samantha. You shouldn't be... I should have had us talk, not argue. Well, arguing has gotten us nowhere. So let's settle what's going to happen with a civilized talk. We talked for one to two minutes and came up with this solution. Well, I guess you should go learn now. I've held you back for long enough. At least we learned something. You should always try to understand why someone's doing something before you get mad. And emphasize that you might have to do something similar to follow your dreams. Thank you. Thank you for helping me talk instead of argue. The present, a small Idaho town like Moscow. At curtain rise, John and Max have just escaped from the pound and John is ready to go adventuring. Thanks John for helping us escape from the pound. You're welcome, Max. That's just the type of adventure that I live for. Yeah, you cleaned that fence like a cat. Yeah, and you jumped it like a horse. That was fun. It reminded me of when you saw that ball and chased it down the hill. Yeah, but that's when I got, I was caught by the dog catcher. I was sad at getting caught. But if you wouldn't have been caught, we wouldn't have met. Let's chase balls and adventure now. I guess that sounds exciting, but I want to find my family. Ah, uh, your family will find you. In the meanwhile, let's have some fun. I love them, and I'm happy when I'm around, I'm with them. Come on, Max. I, I guess just for a while. Oh, all right, I'll race you to the park. Watch out for the garbage truck, John. <laughs> oh, uh, that was close. You could have gotten hit. Ah, oh, you're right, Max, thank you. You bet, John, that's what family's for. Well, yeah, but it's not fair, you have a family and I don't. You could join my family. Me? Really? Really, yeah. You're already like a brother to me. <laughs> well, that makes sense now that I think about it. And that's why I'm so eager to get back to my f with my family. Uh, yeah, all right. Well, let's go find them. Sounds great. It's best to be where you belong. That's my family motto. The time is the afternoon. The place is the Amazon. At curtain rise, Jacqueline the anaconda is sliding around in the branches, and Olivia, the brown necked sloth, comes to join her. Hey, Jacqueline, we need to talk. About what? You need to stop eating all the food. But all the food and stuff is so good. The next day. Hey, Jacqueline, do you know where my house is? What do you mean? I can't find my house. Did you eat my house? No, maybe. 
Yes, it looked so yummy green and brown like a very ripe banana. I couldn't help myself. But you eat meat, not fruit and vegetables, especially not trees. Well, I eat everything. Oh dear, it looks like it's gonna rain. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. But Jacqueline... Sorry, I gotta leave. Jacqueline, you can't just leave me here. Ugh, she just needs to stop that habit. Olivia had no place to sleep that entire night. Hey, Olivia, what's wrong? Oh, what's wrong? You ate my house, now I'm sopping wet, and I'm cold because of the wind. Sorry, I said your house looked like a banana. Jacqueline, you need to find a solution to this problem because it's the right thing to do. I could put rocks in my tummy. No, what place do the things provide food? Well, I know those monkeys are providing smell. Jacqueline, focus. Can we move? That smell is getting to me. So they moved about five trees away from the smelly monkeys. So what were you saying? What places or things provide food? Stores. Okay, what type of stores? Mm, a grocery store? Well, okay. Oh, I see what you mean. I guess I'll go build a store. Fifteen minutes later. Oh, hi, Olivia. Don't you like my store? Um, Jacqueline, what is that? What do you mean? The thing behind you, that's what I mean. Oh, that's my store. You see, I have two sticks to help it stand and a piece of cardboard for the roof, so if it rains, nobody's getting wet. Sorry to break it to you, Jacqueline, but cardboard gets wet. If it rains, it's like paper. You told me to make a store because it was the right thing to do, and I clearly made a store, and it has everything inside of it. Oh, I forgot the food. That's why you were asking what it was that what it was. There's, there's no food? Well, that is important, but the, the cardboard for the roof and two sticks, how are you going to hold all the food in such a small space? Ooh, that's a good point. Olivia, do you have any crates or containers? I would have if you didn't eat them. Oh, I guess I should go ask other animals. I don't think anybody wants to talk to you. Why do you think that? You ate all their stuff. Well, I was hungry. How you? How about you go build a treehouse? But I... Just go build that treehouse. Okay, I'll go. So Jacqueline looked and looked, but there was nothing. Hey, Olivia. Oh, hi. How's that treehouse going? Well, there's no wood. Oh, yes, there is. That's the logging place. There is. Wait. There's a logging place? Do you want me to take you there? Sure. So Jacqueline got to work, and soon she was done. Oh, hey, Olivia, what's up? Wow, you worked on that, on this it, really hard. It looks really good. Yeah, it took forever. Looks like it. Well, you want to go inside? Sure. Olivia looked around. This is cool, but it's getting dark. I guess I'll go to the Stump Hotel. Three days later. Olivia, no one has come to my store. Well, probably no one knows about your sto the store. Could you help me spread the word? Sure. Hey, everyone, there's a story. You can get stuff that is needed. And the next day. Wow, Olivia. Everyone came. I need more stuff already for the store. I'm so happy that you did the right thing by making a store and helping everyone who needs stuff you ate. Yep, I'm glad you helped me do the right thing, even though I failed a little bit. It's okay to fail sometimes. You did the right thing. The end. Time, 12 p.m. Place, Australian jungle. Curtain rise, monkey, 
Bobberton the monkey is holding the fruit, a fruit in the tree. Mmm, this papaya is delicious. Monkey purrs for joy. Oh no, Busy Buzz is racing towards me. I must hide the fruit. Give me the fruit. Where did you put it? Give me that papaya. There it is. I see it. Narrator, the two monkeys race towards the hiding spot. They fight, they yell, they scream. But finally, Bobberton gives up and goes to find another fruit. Bobberton, fine, I give up. I'm going to find another fruit. Ha 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 ha. Oh, that busy buzz, what a nuthead. Ah, oh, finally, some food. At, at that time, busy buzz was finished and was already racing towards Bobberton. They keep fighting like that all throughout the afternoon. Finally, Bobberton yells, Stop! We've been fighting like this all the, all this time. I'm tired of fighting. I want to be friends. I want to stop fighting. Oh, I thought it was kind of fun. Mouth open and all Bobberton yells, what the heck? I thought, I thought. Let's go fight over food. <laughs> and then let's talk it out. <laughs> there, Raider. The two monkeys really fight over the fruit. Then, after fighting over the... F after fighting, they finished eating the papaya. Started and... Star and then they started talking. Finally, they came to a conclusion... They decided to fight every once in a while for fun, but to keep it, their food separate. To make everyone happy, they would f find food together, and so there's more food for everyone. The two monkeys walked away into the sunset and lived happily ever after. The end. Time, midnight on a full moon, place on top of a hill. At curtain rise, two wolves stand on top of a hill in the full moon. I want to be the alpha wolf. You can't, you are too weak. Why would you say that? Because you're too kind. Sometimes you cannot be kind as the alpha. I can be tough. Then prove it. Fight me to show me how tough you are. But I don't wanna fight you, you're my best friend. Then you're too weak. I want to fight you and be alpha. Why do you think being me makes you stronger? Does it make you happy? I want to be alpha too. That would make me happy. You want to be popular like I do, right? Is, is that why you really want to fight? Yes, I want to be popular too. I want everyone to like me. We don't have to fight. We can both be alpha and be popular. That would make us both happy. But there can only be one alpha at a time. Then we can take turns. I can be alpha, then you can be alpha. And that will make us, then we can both be happy. That would make me happy. See, being kind is not weak. And now we are both happy. You're right. I'm sorry I called you weak. That's okay. You're my best friend. The end. Time 2020, my place, my house. Hey, Bob, I'm going to go end global warming and bring peace to the world. Okay. Wait, can I go too? I'm sorry, but the coronavirus is coming in. We'll get sick if we go together. But I really want to go. No, sorry, but the coronavirus is coming. We'll get sick of together. But I really want to go with you. I said no. But I'm your best friend, though. Fine, I'll bring you some veneers, which is the only reason he wants to go. Yay! The end.
time, 1.30 a.m., place, forest, a curtain rise. As I walk through the forest on the soft, cold snow, I see the big ponderosa pine trees and snow-covered bushes. I smell deer, elk, and the fresh air. My friend Odin is behind me. We hear, we see a herd of deer, and we hear the birds singing. Hey, Odin, look over there. There's a herd of deer up ahead. Wow, yeah. Should we chase them? Let's do that later. Hey, Timmy, you don't seem like yourself today. You always like to chase deer. What's wrong? Well, we need to talk. What do you want to talk about? Well, you have a brother and sister, and I don't have a brother and sister. Well, okay. Why bring it up now? It's been my greatest wish for so long, I was afraid of telling you so I would not lose you as a friend. Thank you for sharing your greatest wish. You won't lose me as a friend. The most important thing to me is my brother and sisters, and I'm sure it will be the same for you as well. But I don't have brother and sister, or sister, like I said. I know what I could do for my best friend. I'll share one of my sisters or my brother. But how would that work if you and I want to be one of your brothers? Well, we're best friends, right? Family and friends are the greatest treasure, and since you don't have a brother or sisters, I'll share with you. Well, that would be great. I'm glad that I was honest with you about this. My family and friends are my greatest wish. I mean, treasure. Hello. Hi. So what will your new job be? I don't know. Oh. JK, I'll be a photographer. What? That's amazing. Thanks. Guess where I get to go first? Where? The Grand Canyon. What? Yeah, I'm so excited. No, you're not going. Why? It's dangerous. People get hurt there. I know, but... Bye, Cheer. Ugh. Two days later, Cheer calls Taco. Taco, I'm sorry about a few days ago. It's okay. I'm sorry, too. Our motto is we support each other, and we're not doing that when we fight. And can you please come with me, please? I know we'll have a fun... Taco pauses for a moment to think about it, and then he says, Yes, I will go with you, Cheer. Taco and Cheer had a super time at the Grand Canyon and took lots of great photos. The, the end. end. The time is September 2019. The place is the hallway at school. At curtain rise, there's moss covering the walls of the school hallway. Silas is one of the first birds flying to the class. In front of him is one of the school bullies. Hey, punk, where do you think you're going? I'm going to my classroom. Now get out of my way, please. <laughs> I don't think you are. Bully punches Silas into his locker. That's for making our school team lose, punk. Silas was growing tired of this. The bullies had been picking on him ever since he had made his team lose the claw ball championship last school year. He was throwing the ball into the goal, but he didn't throw it hard enough, so the other team threw it into their goal, and his team was very angry at him because Silas's team had lost the championship for 10 years in a row. He was abused by most of the school, but still, he had a friend named Amazonia. Hi, Silas. Hi, are they chasing you again? Yes. You want to play claw ball this afternoon? Yeah. Get away from him. 
I'm sorry that they come by me every morning and they force me away from you. Do something about this. Just then, an idea popped up in his head. It was good. It was great. It was absolutely perfect. It would work. He knew it would. It could put an end to his bully situation. He flew to Fred's locker, where Fred, the most popular kid in school, hung out every morning. <laughs> hey, Bear. Uh, go away. You know, you should have quit school last year. Get away. Stop. I'll do anything for you. So you look like me. <laughs> Fred thinks. Then he shakes hands with Silas with an evil grin on his face. Now you're going to clean the ba boys' bathroom. What if the janitor cleans the bathroom? But he only cleans it once a week. So you are. And so Silas cleaned the bathroom. There was an awful lot of droppings in there. When he finished, it was 9.31, so he flew to the gym. You're late! As Silas looks at Fred, Fred snickers. After gym ends, Fred congratulates Silas. He walks with him while Amazonia stares at them, confused. Now you're going to clean my locker. Fred opens up his locker, and Silas's eyes widen. His heart started to beat faster. The locker he was staring into was dirtier than even the most imaginative people on the planet wouldn't be able to process. Well, go on. Start cleaning. And so he spent the next three hours cleaning out Fred's locker. When he was done, he was covered from crest to claw in ugly brown dirt. Everyone at school, including Fred, laughed at him. The next day, Silas walked near Fred nervously. Sweat was dripping down his feathers. Today you get to clean my room after school. Don't worry, it's a pigsty. <laughs> Silas looks behind himself and sees Amazonia, but her friend drags her away. Silas then fell down. His head was now overflowing with negative thoughts. He knew that Fred was tricking him to get him into trouble. His problem was worse than ever. But he knew how to solve his crisis. He should have done it a long time ago. So Silas climbed up on top of his locker. Caca! Everyone in the hall stops in their tracks. Some people murmur things like, What is that little punk What's doing? What's that little punk doing? I have had it. I have had it. Were you bullied because of your biggest failure? I have felt very angry and sad. I have even been forced away from my friend because of this. We all have failures, so why even bother doing it? We could, shouldn't be bullied because of our failures. They should be accepted and acknowledged. We, we, we're sorry. Amazonia! I'm uh, sorry that I didn't hang out with you. I should have done that the whole time. Oh, come on. I knew you were still my friend. But I should have stayed true to myself. And when I did, I ended my crisis and yours too. And so the two birds could be friends at school or anywhere. And Silas was never bullied at that school again. The end.